Hey everyone, we're going to talk in this video about tire sizing and the other tire information that you're going to see on a tire that's vital to helping you make the tire choice that's best for your application. Uh, to begin with, we've got a few numbers that you're going to first focus on as soon as you start looking at that tire. Now, the first numbers you're going to look at obviously is the size. You want to make sure that you're getting a tire that's going to fit the wheels that you're working with. If you know you've already uh, focused in on getting a 17 inch wheel or an 18 or 20 inch wheel, uh, you want to make sure that you know to look at that number and that you're getting a wheel or a tire that's going to fit on the wheel that you're choosing. Uh, another factor also is that if you're focusing on used tires, maybe save some cost, uh, it's very popular, I know at least in the off-road industry, a lot of folks will run tires down, you know, half-life or so and then sell them off and get another set or go bigger. And that leaves room for a lot of marketplaces on social media to go out and have used tires sold. What you're going to focus on in that aspect is the manufacturing date. And the reason why is because a tire's usually got about three to five years of good life on it. And, and what I mean by that is that the rubber compound, if you kind of dig your nails into a tire, you can feel, you know, it's got nice good grip, it's squishy, it absorbs your nail. Um, that over time, uh, due to UV damage and then just the natural elements that we go through, whether from driving in rain, hot surface temperatures, um, regardless of what it is, that rubber will slowly break down over time and will, what I like to call plasticize in a sense. Um, literally, it's kind of like driving, you know, a little power wheels vehicle and you see those little plastic tires just turning and turning and spinning out even on dry pavement. That's kind of the same thing you're going to have here with an actual tire. Uh, if you get an old enough tire and it's already starting to dry rot and plasticize, um, you're not going to get very many miles out of that tire. Even dry, you know, mild temperature pavement, you're going to wear that tire down very quickly. Um, so focus on that manufacturing date, which you will find along the DOT. So the DOT number has a series of alpha and then numeric. And so the alpha is a series depending on manufacturing, location, plant, things of that nature. But the, the, you'll see a four digit that's high, or I guess outlined, in most cases it's outlined with a little oval. Those four digits are off by themselves. That is the manufacturing date. Now the first two digits of the four is your week of the year. And the second two digits of, the, of that date is the year that it was manufactured. So if we look at this tire, we're working with a tire that was manufactured in the 16th week of the year 2018. And this tire I purchased probably close to the early part of 2019 in the spring. Um, so this tire did sit on in a warehouse shelf for some time before I put it under my vehicle. Um, now the other four I bought at separate times actually, and those were all produced in the 42nd week of 2018. So when I went to pick up my five tires, I guess you could say, I've got some that were put in, uh, manufactured in the 42nd week towards the end of the year. It's only 52 weeks in a year, keep that in mind. And then this 16, which was produced earlier uh, in 2018. Um, so anyways, um, aside from the fact you wanna focus on those dates, um, not so much the week that it was manufactured, rather the year. Again, if you're getting a tire that's within three years old, you're still going to have quite a bit of life left on that tire um, if the tread's still good, uh, the, you know, the tread depth is still good, um, and then of course the um, the, com the composition of that rubber is still pretty soft, um, you're going to get a good life out of that tire still. So not a bad purchase. Let's look over here. That 37 inch is inches in diameter, outer diameter. Now, that's not a real 37 inch, okay? Even though this says it's 37, it's classified as 37, it's not going to measure out as a true 37. If you look at the specs on this tire when it's brand new, it's gonna come out somewhere around 36 inches. That's just the way it's gonna be. And so, if we put this on the wheel, inflate it, put it under the vehicle, um, you're gonna see that that is no ways near the, the real 37. Now, how does it stand up next to a 35 inch tire? Um, or a 315 uh, in that same class as a 35, um, it, it is a lot larger. You can put those next to each other and see that. Um, so as you run through your sizes, always know that what it's telling you here is not what you're going to physically get on the ground. Um, your second number, that 12.5 or 1250 as it's commonly listed, is the actual width of the tread. Now that tread is what's supposed to contact the surface of the ground and that width comes out to 12 and a half inches. Now, this tire reading is pretty simple to read. 
We're going to look at another tire here in just a minute that is actually listed in metric terms. And we're going to talk to you about how to calculate your outer diameter based on those metric dimensions. Um, so that way you're not left in the dark when you're out looking at tires or used tires um, and, and having to calculate that number. You're going to be able to, be, to do that once we're done with this video. Uh, so let's keep on moving. Uh, another factor that we want to focus in on is the load range. Now this tire, if you look behind the 17, is an LT, meaning light truck smaller cars you're going to deal with a P there'll be a, a P behind that wheel size and that means it's a passenger tire um, so passenger tires are typically for your smaller cars your coupes your four-door sedans you know your small SUVs and such things um, you'll see a lot of tires manufactured in those common sizes as a P passenger what that comes down to is when they're building this tire they're going to make it in different uh, or I guess a different amount of layers of belts and weaving of those belt compounds or the strips of belt uh, that they're going to lay down um, it'll often tell you on the sidewall you know three polyester plus a, a two steel and one nylon is for the tread this one's got three polyester layers uh, for the sidewall um, so load range d is what i'm running here um, now they do manufacture c d e f's and, and so forth but what that means is the further down the alphabet you get the more plies you're going to have on the sidewall as well as the contact surface, the, the tread. What that equivalates in terms of your ride quality is that if you have more layers on your sidewall or even the contact patch, um, as you go over even minor road bumps, there's not a lot of give and the ability to contour to those road bumps or imperfections in the road as you get to those heavier ply tires. So what that means is that if you're driving a lightweight vehicle like a Jeep Wrangler, these four doors stock, they're around 4,500 pounds. As you start to put accessories, bumpers, winch, racks, and so forth on them, you do start to increase that weight. As you increase that weight, you start to compress on that sidewall as that sidewall touches the ground. So it will help soften up that tire a little bit. However, if you go straight to an E load range tire, that was designed for a diesel truck that weighs, you know, 8,000 plus pounds, then you're not going to get the same comfort that you would if you're running that tire on a truck versus a vehicle that's a fraction of its weight of that, of that truck. So think about that as well when you're choosing your tire. Load range. I personally like to run load range D on the Jeeps that we build here as much as possible because I know that with the weight of these vehicles, you're still going to get a comfortable ride out of that tire. Every road bump you're not going to feel uh, literally pushing into the vehicle or every bump you're going to feel in the floorboard uh, or in your seat or in the steering wheel even. Um, if you go to a lighter load range, you're going to get a softer tire. Now for your P, your passenger tires, you don't really have to worry about that. Those P tires, passenger tires, they're designed for those lighter weight vehicles. Manufacturers know that those vehicles are seeking comfort. So they won't have to, uh, I guess if you're buying those P tires, you don't have to focus so much on a load range uh, rather than focus on your DOT number and of course your sizing. So let's go ahead and we're going to look at a metric sizing on another vehicle and we're going to start talking about how to calculate your dimensions knowing whether or not that tire is going to fit for your application. As we move over to a tire that's going to be listed in a metric size, uh, we're going to be looking at, it's a, this is still going on a truck, however it's listed as a P passenger size, uh, uh, sorry, a passenger composition tire, um, meaning that the plies that you have on this tire, you're, going to, you're not going to have as many plies on this tire as you would an LT tire. Uh, so this tire is still going to provide comfort. Uh, now because of the size of it, of course, you're not going to throw this on you know, a passenger car. Um, however, this is a lightweight, this is a Ram 1500 uh, Mopar or no car. Uh, if you keep more than two Mopars in the family, you have double the trouble. So, you know, we want to make sure that this lightweight truck has still got a comfortable tire on it. So uh, that's why this one's listed as a P for passenger. Now, if we break down into the sizing, we have 275 slash 60 R radial, not rim, and then 20. So we know our wheel diameter is 20 inches. And this 275 is actually our contact patch, our tread uh, that goes across the tire. That's our width, 275 millimeters. And then our second number behind the slash is 60. That means our sidewall height 
but that 60 isn't 60 millimeters. That 60 means that it's 60% of the tread width equals the sidewall height. So what that's important is because we can actually take that sidewall height and calculate it over and add it into our wheel diameter and get our total outer diameter. The outer diameter is often listed in a spec sheet as OD. So when you're looking at purchasing tires, uh, you'll see sometimes in the spec an OD. How they calculate that is exactly this. You have 275 millimeters across as your tread. The sidewall is 60% of that. So just a little over half comes over 60%. But the number to that, 60% of 275. So 60% of 275 comes out to 165 millimeters. Now, if you're calculating your overall diameter, we're gonna go from millimeters down here, this sidewall height, millimeters down here on that sidewall height, and then 20 inches in between. So at some point, we're gonna either convert this either into millimeters or convert it over into inches. Uh, whichever is easier for you to figure out and imagine in your head how to visualize that. Uh, for me, it's going to be inches. So here's how we do it. We have our 165 millimeters and then 165 millimeters. You combine those two together because you have two of them to come up to your OD, your outer diameter. Two of those is 330 millimeters. Okay. So what we do next is we want to convert our millimeters into inches and then add that into our wheel diameter. And that's going to give us that overall tire height. If you can, if you can visualize your tire height, then if you've, let's say you've lowered the back of this truck, we did like a leveling drop. Or we lifted the front or lifted the entire vehicle or dropped the entire vehicle. You can come out here and start to measure how much room you have based on the current tire choice. Um, or if there isn't any wheel or tire on there, you can start visualizing that OD or outer diameter and know what you can fit onto your vehicle. Also, let's say you're shopping for a, what's common in the, in the uh, passenger car tire world. Let's say you're driving you know, a Honda Civic or a Honda uh, Accord sedan and the tire size that maybe is listed on your door isn't a common tire, uh, a common tire size. And therefore, when you have fewer selections to choose from, the price of that tire increases. If you can just change even just five millimeters the width and maybe increase by 5% or decrease 5% off of your ratio, you can literally move and manipulate that number in a way that you can find a more popular tire size and not have to compensate your outer diameter so much so your speedometer won't be off, as well as the load on the engine won't change much. And all we simply did was just move uh, these two numbers a little bit. You can fluctuate them. Let's say we go up on this number. Well, then we'll go down on that number a little bit, our ratio number. Uh, so what that means is if we're gonna go a little bit wider, well, so we don't get a much bigger sidewall, let's decrease that percentage by 5%. So if we go wider here, five millimeters, but go down 5%, if you think about that in terms of the overall diameter, you're really not moving around much, maybe by one, two, three millimeters overall diameter. So you can then find a more affordable tire size um, and a lot more options out there for that other tire size. So that's another reason why this is important. So let's go ahead. We're going to move over to the ground, uh, our, our chalk ground here. We're going to see um, how to calculate this entirely. And then you can do this exercise uh, for yourself. Uh, choosing your tires down the road. Okay, so here we can see our total diagram or across or I guess our side view of that tire as well as our wheel. And uh, so here's what we've got. We know that our 275, we're not going to visualize it here in this diagram, but it is actually the tread going across. Uh, the reason why we're going to use that number here is because we want to multiply 275 by 0.6 or 0 0.60, that's 60%. So 275 times 0.6 we come out to 165 millimeter okay now with that 165 millimeter that gives us a now we know that a and c are identical so we can go ahead and multiply this 165 times 2 to come up with the total sidewall here so 165 times 2 and we end up with 330. All right, it's a wonderful zero. Anyways, 
here's how we go from there. For every inch, we get 25.4 millimeters, or you can say 25.4 millimeters equals an inch. We need to get these millimeters, 330 millimeters, converted to inches, and then add it back into our 20 inch diameter. So here's how we go. 330 divided by 25.4, I know you can see that. We do that division on there, we come out to 12.99. Okay, so we take our 12.99 and our 20 inch diameter, add those together, and we end up getting 32.99. inches. So if we go and we take our total measurement of our outer diameter on that tire that's on the ram, we're going to get to a 32.99 inch diameter. And so like I said, some aspects of why that's important is if you've, if you've modified your suspension height or if you're trying to shop and find a more uh, convenient tire choice, uh, then you're definitely going to be able to find that uh, moving around those numbers. Uh, if we're finding something that's, you know, a 275, 60, 20, we only have three tire choices. Okay, well, let's move that a little bit. Let's go to a, um, drop that to, you know, 270 or drop it down to a 265. But we increase our 60 up to a 70. Let's say we do 265, 70, 20. You can run all those numbers. And if we, if we keep sticking around this 32.9, we know that we're going to be working within the same range diameter of that tire. Um, so this is some of the basic math to help you get through that. Um, you know, you can run this across any of these metric size tires and get the information that you need. And uh, so we hope that's helpful uh, and uh, we hope to see you on the next video.